Human and Liability Associates have worked in the area of aviation maintenance in both civil and military aircraft. As you're probably aware, there have been several serious accidents in recent times involving human error during the maintenance process. We've seen the ditching of helicopters in the North Sea, for example, and errors such as the wrong fitting of a, a windshield in a civil aircraft, which led to the pilot being sucked from the cockpit during the flight. The tools and techniques we've developed in Human Reliability Associates enable us to analyze the maintenance processes that are carried out for aircraft in a systematic way in order to identify which parts of these maintenance activities are safety critical, which constitute the greatest risk and how we can minimize the likelihood of human errors in those aspects of the maintenance operations. In this example, I'm going to be showing the application of our tools, the Human Factors Risk Manager, to the analysis of potential human errors in safety critical tasks in aviation. And to do this, we first of all set up a screen similar to one that you see ahead of you, which we're going to use to capture the knowledge and experience of maintenance operators with regard to how they actually perform the maintenance tasks. Now, this may or may not be exactly the same as is documented in the formal procedures. But the objective of this is to understand how the job is done in practice and also to analyze the risks that may be involved. So we begin by specifying the overall goal of the task, and this is taken from a helicopter maintenance task. And as you can see, the overall objective is to replace the, the tail rotor control cable in the helicopter. You can see to the left of that, we have a box which says preconditions, and the precondition box is meant to define what sort of uh, requirements are necessary before the task can start. So in this case, we've just mentioned the availability of the maintenance manual. It might also be the availability of trained personnel, the availability of certain tools and equipment, and the amount of allocated time to perform the maintenance. So everything that appears in the preconditions box is essentially a given in and is not going to be subjected to a detailed risk analysis. So the next thing that we do is we develop the top level of the analysis. So the top level of analysis represents the main subtasks that have to be performed in order for the overall task to be performed. So in order to do this task of replacing the tail rotor control cable, there are a number of subtasks. The first one is connecting the aft cables to the aft quadrant, connecting the forward cables to the forward quadrant, tightening and connecting and tightening the cables, securing the table, cables and fair leads, connect the push rods, and ringing up the tail rotor flying controls. So within each of these subtasks, there may be other lower level subtasks or individual steps. And what we're going to do is to develop those steps uh, in a hierarchical manner by going top down from the least detailed to the most detailed levels. You'll see that each of these boxes has a little cross associated with this. This means when the analysis was conducted, the analyst actually broke down the task into um, a further level of detail. So you can see that for task one, connecting the aft cables to the aft quadrant. This breaks down into threading the aft cables through the vertical stab stabilizers, etc., and, and so on. So there's a number of subtasks there. Some of those subtasks, again, are broken down to another level of detail. So the first one, in this case, uh, we've broken it down to look at the actual failures. So this is the, the lowest level of detail that we're going to break things down to in this case. So if we've finished looking at, at that particular part of the analysis, we can look at a at, at another part of, analysis, of the analysis. So I'm going to open up the task three, connecting and tightening the cables. You can see that up here we have a, a tab which enables us to classify the, the various boxes in terms of who does them, that's the agent or the person, and also in the activity types. So in the case of agent person, all of these, all of these tasks are done by the same person, they're all done by maintenance technician three. So it's quite possible that, some of the, that in some cases some of these steps may be performed by different people. The other thing to say is that each of these sta task steps is of a different type. So we have a classification for activity types and you can see that that appears in the legend on the right hand side. And you can see that actions are colored yellow, checking is colored turquoise color, communication is colored using the pink color and so on. 
So what this enables us to do is to not only specify what is done, but also to define what type of activity is involved. So in this particular case, these two first two, two steps, connecting the cables and ensuring the terminal ends are threaded equally, are both actions. Seeking assistance is an information communication. Ensuring the cables cannot rotate is a checking process and so on. So each of these different activities has a different type of failure. And we can see that, in fact, inserting the clips breaks down into, an, into two more subtasks, uh, again carried out by the same technician. But this is a, an action and this is a checking. So it's quite common to get actions and checking in sequence. So the first part of the analysis is to develop that whole structure of the analysis. And that can be quite complicated. So, for example, if we looked at the whole analysis, we'd, it's quite large. But as we do it systematically, we don't have to actually think about all of these subtasks in turn. We can just think about each one at a time. When we break down the task, not only do we specify what has to be done to achieve that particular task goal, we also specify what sequence and depending on what conditions we do different steps. So in this case, uh, we do 3.1 to 3.2 in sequence. Then if the helicopter has a quadrant, we do 3.3 and then we do 3.4 to 3.8 in sequence. This plan is really important because it's, and one of the points about this analysis tool is that we separate out the, the activities themselves from the plans that determine how the activities are carried out in practice. So we perform this analysis and if we click on this box here we can see that this analysis is actually copied into a, a table, we call that the data grid. And that data grid captures all of the information that we've captured in the task analysis itself. So that's the first stage of the process. And when we've completed the first stage of the process, which is the task analysis, we've got a comprehensive description of how the task is actually carried out. The next thing to do is to analyze the sorts of failures that could occur. So for example, if we determine this is a really high risk step, and we might want to label that up as a high risk step using this little risk matrix here, which says it's a high likelihood of error and a medium high severity of consequences. We want to analyze what failures could occur there uh, there's a couple of ways we could do it. One way is to say, well, okay, if this is an action, if we think about what type of failures that could occur there, we could do that by uh, just specifying different failure types or failure modes, we call them. If there's some alternative there, either one failure could occur or the other failure could occur. So we put an or there, and then we say what type of failures could occur there. Well, we can see that we have a, a list of different failure types there, and here are the different failure modes. For actions. So for example, I'll just get rid of the data grid for the moment. It could be that ensure the terminal ends are threaded equally. So it could be that we would misalign things. Or it could be that we could actually do this action too little or too much. So we have the possibility in fact of recording two types of failure there action too little or too much, and action misalign. Once we've captured the failure types, we can then go into the data grid again, and you can see that those failure types have now been recorded into the data grid, and uh, the activity type is an action. The, the failure type, as we've said, is action too little or too much. And then the actual description is that, uh, if in, in this particular case, we need to look at the actual activity itself, the terminal ends are threaded equally, well that maybe they're not threaded equally here. So, so in terms of action misalign here, it would say that the, uh, the specific failure is that the ends not threaded. Terminal ends are not threaded equally to the turnbuckle barrels. I'm just going to copy that now. And I'm going to paste it into here. So that's a failure. We, that action actually is not carried out. Question is, uh, what are, what's the what's the consequence of that? Well, the consequence of that is is control system failure. We want to start thinking about it. that's obviously a serious consequence. And in fact, we might want to say there is a serious consequence by uh, clicking on a high risk there. So if it's a control system failure, consequence type could be a severe failure. 
so, so, so this could this could be loss of control. in flight, which will obviously be a serious failure. Then we have to think about the, what existing risk control measures do we have. Well, we obviously have a procedure, and we probably have uh, some sort of supervision. And of course, we have the check, but, but we did say the check itself could fail as well. Performance influencing factors are the, the things in the situation that could increase or decrease the probability of error. So, for example, uh, it could be that there's a lot of distractions. Uh, not, it's not clear what the roles and responsibilities are for doing this, uh, this checking task, and so on. And so here we would want to introduce, if we, if we think this is an acceptable level of failure, here we, we could introduce some risk reduction measures. The risk reduction measures could be uh, training in, in roles, could be developing a checklist. Uh, it could be managing distractions, and so on. Also, we may want to, we may want to put some warnings in here. So this is safety critical. Could be inserted in there. Now, once we've done that analysis, what we can then do is we can. Uh, generate a procedure or a training regime based upon that analysis. So if I go into create step-by-step -step procedure from a template and we can create different types of procedures depending on a company uh, um, company standards. We can also introduce photographs by the way. Now it's creating a procedure and you can see this procedure echoes the structure of the task analysis. Here's the, here's the overview of the various tasks that make up the whole thing. You can see that a warning has appeared there, but that's because it was actually inserted in the, in the original task analysis. So what, the, what we've got here is, a, is, a, is the ability to perform a task analysis in a systematic way, to capture the way in which the task is done in, in reality, and with the involvement and input from the uh, people who do the, actually do the work, and then to identify the risks, develop risk control measures, and then develop procedures uh, training manuals and, and other interventions to m ensure that the level of risk from human error is absolutely minimised.